All right, this is my third or fourth time trying to make this video. Hopefully this all goes smoothly so we can be done. All right, so if you're watching this video, we're gonna be assembling the train. You should have all of the parts made. So if you don't, stop the video and make sure you do that. Um, this is our goal. We're trying to make an assembly so the train looks like this. And uh, if you want to, I would like you to color your parts. You can color them however you want. I did a South Dakota State theme, so you could pick your favorite team or um, favorite color or colors and color the parts those colors. Okay, and um, so you probably have an assembly tab already and you shouldn't have anything in it, so you could go to that tab and start the assembly. Since I already have it done and I'm trying to make the video for you, I'm going to go to over here and create assembly. Um, okay, and so we are going to start with the train body since that's what everything is connected to. So go to insert train body. And let's just go ahead and put in the wheels too. We're going to do the wheels next. Now, we theoretically could put like everything in here, but it's uh, to me better to do it a couple pieces at a time so your assembly doesn't get too messy. The two main constraints we're going to use for this are the fasten constraint and the revolute constraint. So the fasten constraint is going to be used for things we don't want to move. The revolute constraint is going to be used for the parts that we do want to move. So to start off with, we're going to fasten the um, back corner of the train. It really doesn't matter what you fasten, but we want to fasten the body of the train to the origin. And then we want the wheels to be able to move, so we're going to use the revolute constraint for the wheels. And it's going to be helpful if you zoom in on this. Now, I can't really figure out if it matters, but you, if you see when I kind of hover over this spot, the whole side is kind of highlighted, but when I zoom in and kind of move it around, it just highlights the whole. I don't know how much it matters, whether it's the body, you know, versus the whole. I would say try to make it so it's just the whole when you select the connector. And then um, we're going to do the back of the wheel. Okay. And again, it kind of highlights the whole wheel, but then if you kind of get more, um, get closer, um, we can kind of, I just had it a minute ago where it's just the whole. So try to make sure it's just the whole. Again, I don't know how much it matters. Um, remember, you can change the direction if it is flipped around and then uh, finish that. Okay, and then do the same thing with this wheel. And finish the sketch. Make sure you can rotate them. Over here we can rename these. Whoops. Um, and especially because with this we're going to get a lot in here, it might be a good idea. You can also rename the parts so you can keep track of them. But the reason it might be good to rename these is because later on we're going to animate these. And so you can animate them and it will be helpful to know what the constraint was for when we go to animate the parts. Okay, now let's do the axle peg. And 
And these don't need to move, so we can fasten these to the wheel. And up. Oh. Take the direction. Make sure the wheels still rotate. Okay, so when you do this one, like with all of this constraint stuff, it's really important to select exactly what I'm selecting. So we want the kind of inner ring here. And you see how there's kind of these three. We want this outer one to the, whoa. And again, there's kind of these three on this one. We want this top one here. Finish the sketch. And then again, make sure the wheels still move. And I would say we only need to rename the Revolute constraints, the fastened ones, since those aren't going to move. I wouldn't worry about those. All right. Now let's do the linkage arm. Revolute. So again, try and make sure it's just the hole highlighted. We want to constrain it to... this one. Okay. Remember you can, you know, change the direction if you need to. Um, that's not what I wanted. That one. that one there we go okay and see how it's kind of weird right now we want to fix that too so like make sure you can still rotate it we can also go back here and animate this And see how it's kind of all weird right there? We don't want that to happen. Okay, sorry, I've done this video four times like I said, and my dog, of course, just had to go to the bathroom. So I had to let him out. All right, <clears throat> so we wanna stop it from being all weird there. So we're gonna use the parallel constraint. We're gonna, we want that peg, or not peg, but arm, <clears throat> to stay parallel to the bottom of the linkage arm. So you want to make sure you're on the bottom of the linkage arm and then the bottom of the body. So now if I animate this, and it doesn't really matter which wheel you animate, It should always stay parallel to the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> now we're going to do the linkage peg. And we're just going to fasten these. <clears throat> so there we go. We went on that hole. Hopefully you have a mouse that makes it a lot easier for this. Zoom in there. <clears throat> okay. Zoom in on this hole. Zoom in on this.
again. I've said this a few times, but remember you can change the direction. And then make sure you can still rotate this. All right. <clears throat> now we're going to do the hitch magnet and the peg. These don't need to move, so we're just going to use the fasten. Fasten that. So, hold there. <clears throat> Sorry. And then fasten the um, kind of the top part of that. Right. By the way, if you need to, restart the video and do the other side with the wheels, the axle peg and all that. I'm, it's the same exact thing, just the other side. So I think it seems silly to do a whole, like, do that all over again for you. All right, so now with the um, cow catcher, we... Whoa. There we go. I don't know what I did there. Um, <clears throat> we're actually going to start off using a, a revolute constraint because otherwise it won't work because we kind of have to be able to rotate this to get all, like another peg in the hole. So we're going to start off with a revolute constraint and we are going to do... So again, that you have those three we want this back one of that peg, the center peg, and we want it to, again, you have those three. We want it to the front or to outer one here. Finish this. And then, um, okay. Now, We are going to do the oh boy. There we go. We are going to do this hole and this peg. And we're going to do a fasten. So you really have to get it to do the hole and that outer part. And then this peg in the back part. Finish. All right. Now, I had trouble with this in the last video, and that's kind of why I had to restart. So if you're having trouble with it, you might need to keep undoing. Or, um, again, the nice thing about this is you can share your file with me, and I could, could look at that. So the last piece is the um, smokestack. And we are going to do a fasten constraint. So we want this outer hole. There we go. And we want this part there. And you can change the direction if you need. And there you go. Now you do the other side and then you are going to screenshot this for your PowerPoint. Okay. <clears throat>